Hi, I'm a field applications engineer from LDRA, and today I'm going to be talking about gaining compliance with the MISRA 2023 guidelines. Whether your project is in C or in C++, gaining compliance with the MISRA guidelines can be a daunting task with all of the different paperwork that you'll need to fill out and all of the different rules and directives that you'll need to make sure that you're following. Luckily for us, LDRA actually has some built-in tools to help us with gaining this compliance and making sure that we're meeting all of the MISRA requirements. It's important to note that while MISRA C and C++ 2023 are two completely different coding standards meant for two completely different languages, they're actually laid out very similarly. And this helps us out quite a bit later on when we're going for compliance in either of these standards as the processes are really fairly similar. Both of these standards have a total number of rules and directives organized into three different categories, that being mandatory, required, and advisory. If you're wondering what the differences are between directives and rules, directives are just broad, higher level guidelines that focus more on the overall system rather than a specific coding requirement. Whereas rules are specific coding requirements that must be followed to ensure compliance with the MISRA standard. Both of these standards are also tailored specifically to address the modern requirements for C and C++ respectively, and they also replace their respective older variants in MISRA C++ 2008 and MISRA C 2012. If you take away anything from this video, take away this. The documentation that you see on the screen right now, MISRA Compliance 2020, Achieving Compliance with MISRA Coding Guidelines, is quite possibly the single most important piece of documentation you can have when it comes to explaining how MISRA Compliance actually works. This isn't going to give you any specific rules or directives associated with your specific coding standard, that'll be in a different piece of documentation. But this free piece of documentation available on MISRA's website explains specifically what types of documentation you need to provide, as well as the procedures that you need to follow in order to actually gain compliance with MISRA. And if we take a look at the excerpt that I have here from this document, we can see that our MISRA compliance really comes down to four main pieces of documentation that we'll need to provide in order to claim this compliance with MISRA. The first thing that we're going to need is going to be what's called a guideline enforcement plan. And really what this is, is a document that is a piece of evidence that shows us how we actually enforced our guidelines. What tools did we use? What violations were identified? And how did we fix them? The second piece of documentation that we'll need is a guideline compliance summary. And this is going to declare the level of compliance that we are claiming with MISRA. So specifically, which guidelines are compliant? How much compliance are we claiming? Are we claiming 50%, 80%, 100% compliance. The third piece that we need to provide is going to be deviation records and any deviation permits. Um, this also includes the fourth thing that we're going to need, which is whether or not we have recategorized any of our guidelines in a guideline recategorization plan. So the first thing obviously is do you have any deviations? Are there any justifications that you're providing for any rules that may have been broken but are still in your code? And why are they there? And then, of course, uh, did you recategorize any of the rules? Because MISRA actually allows you to recategorize rules up a level. So if you have an advisory rule that you want to recategorize to required, you're allowed to do that. You just need to provide a guideline recategorization plan. So now that we have all of these requirements listed out here, let's jump into LDRA and take a look at the various different reports and features that we provide so that you can meet these requirements quickly and easily. So the first thing that I want to show off here is how to recategorize or disapply 
any specific rules that you may need to for your guideline recategorization plan. So the first thing that we'll need to do is select a violation or a misery rule that we'd like to recategorize. So I'm gonna go through and find an advisory rule. Let's say I wanna grab this rule 14D of the LDRA phase code 14D. It's listed as advisory and this maps to the MISRA rule for 17.8. So if I want to recategorize this MISRA rule as a required rule or a checking rule, I'll simply go to the configure tab, C standard model editor, We'll go to the edit tab, section comments, and section five. And here we can see that I've actually already recategorized this to a checking rule, which is the same as a required rule for MISRA 2023. We can also use this tab to disapply any MISRA rules that we may not want. And I say any MISRA rules, I mean any advisory MISRA rules, as MISRA will allow you to disapply advisory MISRA rules. And all of these will show up in our reports later on when we take a look at those. The next piece of the puzzle to take a look at is going to be the guideline compliance summary for MISRA C 2023. I can load up my reports for that here. These are generated automatically. And you can see that we have a MISRA C 2023 compliance report that shows our overall compliance with MISRA C 2023, as well as any guideline violations that we have and our total number of violations that we have. This is very handy because it breaks it down into each individual MISRA guideline that we may or may not be compliant with, as well as if we have any deviations within these. Scrolling down here, we can see our MISRA C 2023 guideline recategorization plan. This is the recategorized rule that I had made earlier. We can see here that it's guideline 4.6, and it was recategorized from an advisory rule to a required rule along with a description and some comments. The next piece of the puzzle is the guideline compliance summary. And this is the piece of documentation that's going to tell us whether or not we are actually compliant with MISRA. Here we can see that we have 24 guideline violations and one deviation, so we are not compliant yet. We need to take all of these guideline violations and either fix them or have deviations associated with them. If I'd like to take a look at my deviations, we can scroll down and we can see that we have our deviation right here for R15.1. If I'd like to take a closer look at this, I can actually take a look at the Standards Model Exclusions Report. This is the fourth and final piece of the puzzle that shows us all of our exclusions, all of our deviations, and any justifications that we might have for them. Thanks for watching this short video on MISRA 2023 compliance. If you need any more information, don't hesitate to reach out to us at info at LDRA.com. And please subscribe to take a look at some more interesting videos from us. Thank you and have a nice day.